please welcome uh, Nicola for his talk, uh, Eve, REST APIs for Humans. Good morning, thank you. So, uh, but, um, first a little story. Uh, two, two years ago, in 2012, I was at EuroPython in Florence, and I, was, uh, I gave a talk about uh, building REST APIs with Flask. Uh, that was uh, a um, kind of a training, a very long talk, and um, uh, there was a lot of interest about that uh, project and the code that I showed back then. And people were asking if uh, um, we were thinking about releasing the, that kind of uh, application as an open source project. And be, so, if, uh, uh, which is the project which, that I'm going to show you today is basically the um, offspring of that talk. And so it, I, it's very cool for me to be here again at EuroPython and presenting uh, uh, the result of that um, event. So um, REST API for humans, I, I guess 100% uh, uh, of you uh, knows that I stole this uh, tagline from uh, Kenneth Wright's request which is uh, basically the client uh, uh, side of uh, any Python REST API. And the reason why I'm doing this is because basically uh, the, the, the idea behind uh, this REST API framework is the same as request, which is uh, make uh, things as simple as possible. And uh, um, so here it is. Um, well. I will just keep about on this one, since uh, you already uh, heard from um, my chair uh, speaker um, what I do for work, for job. Um, and what is uh, the, the philosophy of Eve? Uh, basically, you have some data stored somewhere, some data, and you need the REST API to expose your data to some, I don't know, mobile client maybe, or web uh, website, or what have you. And what you do is just uh, install Eve, and uh, in a few, hopefully, hopefully in a few minutes, you get a uh, working uh, API uh, for you. It is powered by Flask, as I told you already, MongoDB, Redis for a few features and a few other things, but these are the big three uh, guys in town, let's say so. Um, and a very quick, um, quick start, so you get an idea of what working with this framework uh, means. How many of you are working with Flask already or have an idea? Or Oh, great. So if you uh, work with Flask, you can recognize this code uh, is basically the uh, quick start from the Flask website. The only difference is that you are uh, using Eve instead of Flask. This is because Eve basically is just a subclass of Flask. So everything you can do with Flask, you can do with Eve. And this is uh, uh, probably a good idea because I see people using Eve as a Yes, as a REST API, but also as Flask. So they are using blueprints, for example, for uh, adding new features to the API and uh, stuff like that. Um, then the other thing you need to do is uh, you, you need the launch script that we just saw, and you need a settings file where you basically uh, design your API. And uh, the, the idea here is uh, like Django and other framework, you just uh, have a, a text file. And in this case, we are uh, giving uh, two endpoints to our APIs, people and books. As you see, we aren't defining anything for these endpoints. So we are basically just saying, hey, I want two endpoints on my REST APIs, and these endpoints are named people and books. And then you, you just launch the API, and your API is up and running and ready to uh, to work for you. Uh, for example, you can uh, access the people endpoint. Uh, you see that even if we didn't define anything for the endpoint, and uh, we, uh, did you notice we didn't uh, define any, any kind of database connection actually, but uh, the API is working anyway. What you get here is a few metadata, meta fields, so items, which is supposed to be the list of items from the people collection, which is empty, of course. And the, the links um, is uh, a, a different um, meta field, and we will cover it uh, in a few mi minutes, but you can already guess what's up going on there. Mm, yeah, 
It's uh, this uh, um, age, A T A O A S. I don't know how to speak it in English, but uh, basically uh, they are just the links to the API endpoints. And you can, if you want to, you can uh, uh, write your client in a way that it can uh, navigate these uh, uh, links and build the client API and uh, um, the, the client UE uh, based on these links. You can uh, turn this feature off if you want to. <clears throat> okay, I'm just keeping it. Uh, let's um, connect the database now. Uh, very simple, of course. And then, uh, while we are here, let's also define some uh, uh, schema for our endpoint. So here, what we are doing is uh, defining a few fields, uh, and we are using uh, uh, and we are defining some data types and some uh, um, validation rules. So the name fields is a string. It has a max length. It is unique. And email field we can uh, it is a string, of course, but we can also set a regex for validation of this uh, field. Don't use these regex in production because uh, it sucks. Uh, but just to give you um, an idea of um, what you can do. And uh, you can, uh, even if you look at the schema uh, keyword down there, you can even uh, nest the dictionary within dictionaries, list within dictionaries, and list whatever you have you. <clears throat> and then we can, uh, by default, uh, an API is uh, read-only, but of, co of course you can uh, change that. In this case, we are uh, um, enabling uh, writing to the API endpoint. We are also allowing uh, uh, edit of the items, uh, replacing the items, and deleting the items. So you have to do this explicitly. Otherwise, the API endpoint will be read-only. This is, of course, for safety reasons. And um, yeah, yeah, a few more. Uh, uh, toys just to show you what you can do. You can set cache control on that point, uh, additional lookups, a lot of stuff. And so we defined our uh, API endpoint. Uh, we, uh, we wrote that launch script with a few lines. And uh, what do we get from this, for this? Well, first of all, you have filters, for example. Uh, you, your uh, clients can uh, query the endpoints. They can do that using a Mongo uh, syntax of source. So here you have an example where we are querying the people endpoint for the last name do. But you can also use a Python uh, syntax if you prefer. This is because maybe if, if your client is being writing, uh, write, wrote by you, uh, you can use Mongo and there is no big deal. But for example, if you expose your API to a website or to people actually using it and they don't know anything about Mongo, maybe you prefer to use a different syntax, so you can do that. You can uh, uh, have a sorting on your endpoint. In this case, we are uh, sorting in descending order. You can use pagination. It is enabled by default. So for example, here we are asking, give me page two, and uh, only 20 results at max. Uh, projection, this is very nice. You can uh, say you have a document win, uh, with, uh, I don't know, uh, 50 fields. Uh, you can say, don't give me these fields in this request back to the client, because I want to save on bandwidth or uh, on performance, for example. In this case, we are uh, uh, telling the API, don't send me the pictures, for example. Don't send me the avatar, because I don't need it. And here we are doing the contrary only return me last name, for example, which is very handy if you are using, a, you are writing a mobile application, for example, you want to optimize the traffic and the, uh, the data being sent on the wire. <clears throat> Another very cool feature is uh, embedded resources. So basically um, here we will see an example. Here we have, uh, we are asking to embed the author field. Let's see what does it mean. Uh, um, by default, when you uh, get a document, you will get uh, for the author field uh, its uh, uh, foreign key for maybe another endpoint. This is what you would get by default. But if you uh, send a request uh, with um, the embedded uh, keyword, what you get is an embedded document with the, the full uh, author. This is again uh, to avoid sending two requests uh, for the for the data that you need on your client. Uh, by default, your API will support both JSON and XML. 
And uh, here you have an example of uh, uh, the resources with uh, JSON. You know that very well. Uh, by the way, all the field names uh, for the meta field names are configurable by you, so you can change whatever you see here to suit your needs. And this is the same resource in XML. We already uh, saw hypermedia as the engine of application state at work. Uh, let's quick look here just to have an idea. Uh, you get the link to the same item, to the parent item, next page, if pagination is enabled and you have more pages, you get a link to the next page and uh, even a link to the last page, of course. Again, all these features are enabled by default, but you can switch them off. For example, you don't want us to support XML, switch it off. You don't want HTOS, you, you turn it off, etc. You can customize the API however you want. Document version is something that we just uh, released with the, 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 the last release. Uh, um, it is basically uh, Git for the documents, <laughs> if you allow me. And uh, what you can you do when you switch this on, basically you get versioning for your documents. Uh, this feature has been contributed by a SpaceX engineer, actually, so I am very proud of that. And um, you see here, um, we are asking for version three of, of uh, one document, or uh, uh, give me all the versions of the documents, or you can even ask for the, diff the diffs of the, between the documents. Maybe this is not something that everybody needs, but it's very cool to have it at hand. File storage. You can store uh, uh, files within the API since uh, by default if it is uh, um, supported by Mongo, is, is using Mongo. We are storing in GridFS, which is basically uh, optimized storage for files in MongoDB. How many of you are using Mongo or thinks about, think about using Mongo in the future? Okay, not... Okay, quite a good number. Uh, we will see that there is also a SQL alchemy branch for you uh, later, so uh, keep your hopes high. And uh, here, an example of how you do a uh, storage of uh, a file. When you define, uh, define your endpoint, uh, we saw earlier that you can define, uh, define a string type, but you can also define a media type. And uh, then when you uh, send your data, what you do is just uh, use a, a multi-part data form, a, a data form, sorry, a post, and you send your pick along with the other fields of your document, your picture. And uh, when you get that document back, you get uh, the picture as a base 64 string. Um, and you can also, um, enable uh, uh, this uh, extended media info setting, which basically is going to give you not only the file itself, but also the extended, the, the media, uh, the metadata about this field. So for example, content type, name of the file, size, etc. Again, you can disable, enable file storage, uh, however you wish. Rate limiting, this is powered by Redis. What you can do here is set the number of requests that a single client is allowed to perform on your single endpoint per minute, or I shouldn't say per minute, but per time window. Here we have an example where we are setting the get method limit at one request per minute window. So you can have different uh, uh, limits per method and uh, different time windows as well for every single endpoint. So the first get uh, gets back uh, is, is uh, answered by the API and in the header section, so you get information about rate limiting. So you only have, uh, uh, you did, you, there, are, there is one request allowed on this endpoint per minute, you have zero remaining and the next reset of the time window of it is at that time point in time. The second request within the same minute will get a two to nine too many requests. This is just to give you an example of how this works, this is supposed to work. This is, uh, of course, useful if you want, if you have uh, performance issues or if you want to avoid uh, your API getting uh, hammered by some client, maybe a buggy client or somebody trying to uh, do some kind of weird thing or attack on your API. Conditional request, um, so uh, the client can send a request using the if modify since header and for example, uh, say please return, uh, return me the, the, uh, the data from this uh, endpoint only if it has changed since. 
so uh, we don't get back always the same uh, the same uh, the, i don't know in the people and point example we saw earlier uh, i when i get back the first uh, result set this, uh, the, the next request i can get back new data only and on all the um, the data load If none match is similar, uh, but we are using e tags here, so this is mostly used on the item endpoints, so not on the people endpoint, but on the single person endpoint. And for uh, what it does is the same things, basically give me the person only if, it, if something has changed on it. There is also support for bulk inserts. Uh, so you can send multiple documents on the API endpoint uh, uh, with a single request. Here we are sending two documents, for example, and when you get back uh, as a response, is an array of uh, responses actually, because validation is performed on every single document. And um, uh, there are two, me, uh, two uh, options here. You can uh, switch uh, coherence mode uh, off, which is the default. In this case, you are only going to back the metadata back, which they will be useful for uh, sending a subsequent request later and stuff like that. Or you can uh, basically say every time send me back the whole document uh, included the meta fields. This is something new we, that was just added to the um, APS, to the feature set. Quickly on that integrity concurrency control, you basic, we are basically using e tags for uh, um, that integrity checks. So when you try to modify a document, if you don't provide that if match header, you aren't going to get that patch in. Uh, in fact, you are going to, better, to get a 403 back. Uh, if you send an e-tag, but this e-tag is not matching the e-tag on the server, you are going to get a precondition failed error. If you give me the e tag which matches matches the document on the server, then the the edit will go in. Why this? This is because we want to avoid a client with an old version of the document overwriting a newer version of the document on the server. So only the client who already knows about the latest release of the document can update it. Data validation, of course. In this, we have, here we have a, a response example of a um, bulk insert where the first document got an error, and uh, Clinton is not unique, but uh, uh, the second document was accepted. Uh, there is support for authentication, authorization, so basic uh, token authentication, HMAC, which is basically what uh, Amazon S3 is using and, uh, on their um, platform. Uh, Even runs on, on all kinds of Pythons, uh, 3.4 and PyPy included. And there is a lot of more stuff, we don't have time to go over that. Uh, uh, versioning is, is uh, here, versioning is, means uh, API versioning and non document versioning. So you can have basically uh, your endpoint version 1, version 2, version 3 of the, your API. It's BSD licensed, open source, so you can do whatever you want with it, you don't owe me any money. And uh, okay, what we saw uh, uh, so far is what you get for free without any line of coding. You just have to uh, pull the switches on and off. You um, have this feature uh, as we turning on and off. But what about developers? If what, how can I customize my API? Here I have a few examples. For example, you can have custom data layers. So in this case, we, uh, what we see is uh, uh, the code from the SQL HME branch, which is a work in progress. Uh, in progress. What you do is basically uh, subclass uh, the base data layer, uh, and, uh, and then you go off and write your own data layer. For example, we have an extension which is called Eve Elastic, uh, and is using uh, Elasticsearch. And um, here we have a SQL HME and uh, whatever you want to use. This is an example of the SQL HME, by the way. Uh, here you see that in this approach, uh, what you do is uh, using uh, SQL HME classes, and uh, you just register the schema, so you don't have to write the, 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 the resource schema in the settings file, because uh, SQL HME is already providing you the, the classes uh, with the, um, basically the implementation of the your endpoint. Here is an example of the Elasticsearch uh, data layer. And the MongoDB is doing exactly the same, it's just subclassing the basic data layer. 
Authentication. This is where uh, uh, you actually have to do some work because you need to um, uh, subclass uh, the base class here and provide the authentication logic by yourself. This is, of course, because uh, this is something you want to be in total control of. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with authentication. You can lock the wall API, you can lock only certain endpoints and leave uh, other endpoints open to uh, the public or, or read-only, write-only, read-and-write, whatever, role-based, access control. Uh, there is a lot of stuff here, but don't we have time to look at it. Just three steps uh, uh, of tutorial to give you an idea of, of uh, how you do this. You basically just import your class, basic auth class. You uh, override this uh, check auth method. Here we are basically saying, hey, uh, whatever uh, request comes to this endpoint with a username and mean and password secret, let it go, it, it, it is good to go. Otherwise, we will send back a, a not allowed response. And then what you do is when you, uh, you um, create your Eve instance, you just pass your uh, custom class to, the, to Eve, and that's it, your API is now protected. Uh, of course, in this case, we are just setting this uh, uh, protection for the whole API, all the API endpoints, but you can actually change your class for, either, for any, every single endpoint, or uh, as I said before, you can even leave some endpoints without protection and others with. And that's all you, that you need. Custom validation. You can add the custom data types, uh, custom validation logic if you need to. And uh, that is very nice because, uh, for example, in the next release, we will add support for uh, GeoJSON. And so we, you will have a point, multipoint, polygon, polygons, and uh, all this kind of stuff. Uh, and then we have event hooks. This is, uh, sorry if I'm going very qu quickly on this, but uh, with a, the time is short on us, so uh, this is very nice because when something is going to happen on your API, what you can hook callback function on basically every event. So here for, uh, you see that you can uh, set uh, add a uh, um, callback function uh, every time an item is being inserted, for example, or after it is being inserted. The same happens with get, patch, put, delete, and whatever have you. There is a, a simple example here. Uh, what we are doing in this example is uh, update the documents that the client is sending us with a new field. Uh, so you just define a, your callback function. Here we are, uh, and you see that the, the functions is getting the resource, and basically resource is the endpoint, and documents is the collection of documents being, uh, that are going to be inserted in the MongoDB. And what I'm doing here is uh, uh, just adding a new field or overwriting this field if it, if it exists. I gave this presentation in FOSDEM in Brussels in February. This is why there is FOSDEM, and I didn't have the time to update it. And, uh, uh, and then when you are about to launch uh, your uh, API, you just uh, hook your uh, um, function to the callback, as you can see down below. And then you have custom uh, file storage. As I said before, we store on GridFS by default, but you can change it to whatever you want. There is a guy who did an S3 uh, class, for example, so uh, his uh, Eve instance is storing the data on uh, S3 on Amazon S3, or you can uh, store on file systems, uh, whatever you want. And then there is the community, just a, a few words on it. Uh, there are a few extensions available already released by the community. For example, if Docs is, a, a, this is a very cool project actually. It uh, uh, generates documentation for your APIs, and uh, what it does is uh, this you get a, a docs endpoint, and uh, when people access that endpoint, in, instead of getting a JSON or XML, they are getting an HTML page with the documentation of the API. And um, it, it is actively maintained, and there are a lot of contributors on this project, and what basically gives you an automated documentation for the API. Eve Mongo engine. This is uh, uh, basically a connector between Eve and Mongo engine. Uh, if anybody of you are using uh, Mongo engine, uh, you can do what we have seen with SQL Alchemy with this uh, uh, ORM for uh, Mongo. <coughs> Eve Elastic. We told about. Uh, we saw it already. Eve Mocker is a mocking tool for Eve. And the, the, the thing that matters to me is that the community about Eve uh, is uh, quite 
is starting to grow quite a bit. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, about 50 contributors to the project, but what I'm really looking for is more contributors joining the project. So if you are interested in this kind of stuff, uh, you uh, do know that uh, you can actually contribute to the project as it is on GitHub, of course, and we have a few tickets opened. And what I'm specifically looking for is uh, people who are willing to work on the SQL Alchemy uh, branch because it is now feature complete, it is, uh, but it, before merging it, what I need is people actually wanting to work on the SQL Alchemy branch even after it is, it's been released. I don't want to merge the, 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 the branch and then have people complain because something doesn't work. I don't, I don't want to look at it personally because it's not my kind of job. I'm doing uh, something else. So if you want to join a, a nice project and you're interested, please do so. We are working on GeoJSON for the next release, so you you will uh, you will be able to define a, a Geo data point or Geo data point, uh, and um, validation will work. Uh, you can do queries on this kind of stuff, etc. JSON P and a few uh, custom render classes. A lot of stuff is coming up in the you know, is on the pipeline basically. This is the uh, URL for the project, so you can go there, read the documentation, uh, uh, get to the GitHub repository and uh, see the change log, uh, get in touch with me or, or my Twitter account, of course, uh, you can get in touch with me even at this account. If you go to GitHub at Nicola, uh, uh, Nicola Yerocci, you find the, the source code for the project. And uh, if you go on Twitter and um, you can follow me and I, I usually use Twitter to update on uh, the merges, uh, the new comments coming in and uh, commenting and sometimes even, uh, 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 I don't know, like uh, uh, complaining about stuff and like uh, stuff like that. But well, if you want, you can follow me on Twitter. And basically that's it. I wanted to uh, give you a little demo, but I don't think we have time for, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> figure so. so. If anybody wants to see something working, uh, just one thing, uh, there, is, there is actually a, um, I'll cheat here, there is basically an online demo of uh, an API, it's, uh, a, which you can consume with your clients or with, even with uh, just Chrome, for example. This is Postman, but if you go to ifdemo, rokuapp.com and uh, slash people, what you, get back is an uh, XML because um, Chrome is, is requesting XML data, but uh, basically you can consume a API, if you play with it, send get, put a request, and stuff like that, and play and see whatever, what, um, for example, here I'm asking for the people endpoint with uh, where people has, uh, have a white last name, and what I'm doing here is using the, actually the Heroku application in remote, so you can play with it basically, and, um, and get a, a first hand experience of uh, the API. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Nicola. We have a little bit time left for questions, so please raise your hand and I come with the microphone. Uh, thanks for the talk, looks really interesting. Thank uh, you. Do, do you have any support for testing your REST API? You testing? Know? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by testing? I mean, there is a, a, a huge uh, test suite on the on the repo, so uh, every feature is uh, being tested when every uh, on every commit you submit to the to the um, to the source code actually. Uh, so, so what I mean is, uh, it's easy to create a REST API, but what if I want to have some tests for it, uh, for my for my API that I built with your framework, like something for that? Ah, yeah, it is easy to do because you you can uh, basically if, again is a, a Flask application, it's Flask. So whatever you can do with, with Flask, you can do with it, which means that uh, you can do tests very easily on um, on your own API. Actually, you can also use uh, our tests. Uh, to see how it's done, it's done, and then implement your own test on your uh, own API. It's very easy to do. Uh, uh, the test suite is something uh, of which I'm kind of, uh, you know, I mixed feelings about it. It's uh, I'm kind of proud because there are, uh, I, I think, 500 tests, and it, it, uh, I'm testing everything, but it is in need of uh, some refactoring, actually. So if you, that's an ultra, another area when uh, you could, think about joining the project. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Thanks for your project. Do you also support URLs instead of IDs? For example, you showed us the, the book and the author with the ID. Mm -hmm. Could we have a URL instead of an ID? Yes, uh, what you can do, I didn't show here, is you can actually have uh, nested URLs. So for example, you can have uh, um, cities slash city ID slash uh, people slash people ID, for example. So the per or person uh, in the in the city. Uh, this is not a very good example actually, but you get the idea. And you can design your own URLs uh, since uh, again it is a Flask application. So you can you can even define uh, uh, an additional URL for the same endpoint. For example, if you don't like the ID, which is a row number, uh, of course, uh, you can define uh, a new URL based uh, on the last name, for example. So uh, api.com slash uh, um, Smith will get your uh, person with the last name of Smith. So yes, you can play with the URL quite a bit. Quite a bit. Okay, thanks a very, thank you again, Nicola. Thank uh, you, guys. Uh,